Uh, this is Walt Ford, retired Marine Colonel, editor for Leatherneck Magazine. We're here at the Marine Corps Association with Charles Chip Jones, author of War Shots, Norm Hatch and the U.S. Marine Corps Combat Cameraman of World War II, and we have with us Norm Hatch, Major Norm Hatch, United States Marine Corps retired, who is the subject of the book. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Good morning. thanks very much for coming down to be with us today. It's great to be here. It's an exciting uh, opportunity to have us uh, for the Marine Corps Association to have you both here talk about the book and then later go over and do a book signing. So thank you. Charles, known as Chip, long line of uh, Marines in your family. Why did you write this particular book? What made you or drove you to this book? Well, this book has a real organic feel uh, to me because it grew out of uh, my second book was called Red, White, or Yellow, uh, the media and military at war in Iraq. and. Um, uh, I happened to uh, uh, be able to speak to some combat correspondents after that uh, book was published and uh, you were kind enough uh, to take me to an event at the National Press Club around 2007 when I was um, promoting Red, Red, White or Yellow and uh, we happened to swing by the house in Alexandria of a very well-known uh, marine combat photographer and cinematographer uh, a gentleman who was sitting beside me, Norm Hatch, and um, I had seen the, the iconic photo of Norm in the Marine Corps history books, uh, standing with his IMO camera, uh, filming um, the uh, battle at Tarawa and the famous uh, taking of the uh, bunker, uh, where uh, I think it's known as Bonnyman's Hill, where uh, Alexander Bonnyman won the Medal of Honor, and. Um, I was just blown away, frankly, to meet Norm at the time I met him, and that led to a question from me at another combat correspondence event in Alexandria, which was, well, where's your book, Norm? And Norm's precise answer, I think, was, uh, I don't have one, do you want to write it? Uh, that question uh, proves the underlying uh, theme of the book, which is, that uh, as a young Marine, he always looked for the next opportunity. And if there's an overarching theme for uh, the readers of Leatherneck, it would be in your career, always look for that next opportunity because look what Norm Hatch did. Outstanding, outstanding. When you, uh, knowing that and going into the book, going into the research for the book, you must have had certain expectations of what you would find. Were there any surprises in doing your research to write the book? You know, there are a couple things come to mind. Uh, one is the amount of influence that a young Marine sergeant, such as uh, Norm Hatch was at the time of Tarawa, and then later when he, uh, when he became a warrant officer, uh, but even at the time and where he was at Iwo Jima and the 5th Marine, Marine Division photo officer, it's amazing to me um, that Norm had the uh, influence on some of the decisions that the highest levels of the Marine Corps, including the Commandant, um, uh, and General Vandergriff, made um, about how the images and how the, uh, the, the story of the war, and Tarawa in particular, and then Iwo Jima, uh, how those stories were being told and portrayed and uh, that was something that um, I think distinguishes the Marine Corps even today um, when I happened to spend a little time with combat correspondents in Fallujah, the amount of top-down authority that's given to the, the uh, enlisted men and women now in the Marines, uh, I think that that is, is an institutional uh, value, if it's not too uh, you know, highfalutin a word, uh, that in telling the story to me, uh, Norm got across. And I think it's an incredible part of the narrative of World War II that, that I just, I feel really honored to have been basically um, the conduit to help tell that story. And I had no idea, I had no idea that a 22, 23 year old sergeant in the Marines could be part of the, the generals and the, the highest levels in Washington deciding and figuring out what had happened in Tarawa, uh, President Roosevelt deciding 
uh, what pictures would be released to the public, um, how the Marine Corps won its first Academy Award for mm -hmm. short subjects, mm -hmm. and then later what happened uh, at the top of Mount Suribachi with the uh, Joe Rosenthal's photo and the allegations that, that came out that were incorrect about staging uh, the second flag raising. All those things Norm was in the thick of, uh, and, and I'm just completely blown away by um, how he was um, just an integral part of a lot of stories, and I don't think, uh, I don't know how it would have been if he'd been in the Army or the Navy, but I think somehow that entrepreneurial spirit of the Marine Corps comes through Norm's story, um, and, and he always, and, and, and it comes through his career too, and why he wound up being trained at the March of Time and pushing for things that he knew, he just had a sense, he was excited, and Norm's 90 now, but uh, you know, he still has that same, he has an excitement that he, he describes as riding uh, the crest of a, of a wave in his life. Um, I just think it's a powerful story and I think it's one that perhaps only a Marine uh, could have experienced. Well, thanks, Chip. Major Hatch, Norm, sir. Right. Uh, as the book points out, you are our currently oldest surviving member of the Lenox staff, having been on the staff 1939 as a PFC. You went on to some great things in your life. Some, some, each of your achievements could have been the penultimate achievement of, for anyone else, but you did so many things. Tarawa, well, Mar March of Time, Tarawa, 5th Marine Division, saving the Marine Corps uh, with uh, bombs over uh, Tokyo. Uh, so many things that you did in your career and then went on to the Department of Defense. Is there uh, one singular event that might be in the book that you felt uh, more important to you than all the other things that you've accomplished, to include that Oscar? Well, I think that, uh, to make things perfectly clear, I did not get the Oscar myself. That was presented to uh, General Julian C. Smith, who had been the commanding officer of the 2nd Marine Division at Tarawa. But <clears throat> having said that, the uh, uh, at the young age that I was at when all of these things were happening, uh, it didn't uh, uh, appear to me that I was doing such great things, but I knew that I was doing something that had never been done before. So consequently, uh, uh, the results of not only my film, but the film that all of the men shot during World War II was extremely important because uh, as you mentioned, the, uh, the title Bombs Over Tokyo, uh, at the end of the war, when the fight was on as it is today, about who gets the money and who's going to do what, what thing in the military, uh, the Marine Corps was hard pressed and uh, the Commandant actually told uh, Colonel Krulak, Lieutenant Colonel Krulak at that time, that he was seriously afraid that he was going to lose the Corps because the uh, people at the Congress and then the Consolidation Committee set up by Truman just did not understand what he was saying when he was going up to the hill as justification for retaining the Corps. So it was Krulak's idea that a film might help and uh, he came to my office and we did. We made a film and he carried it all over town showed it to the Hill, showed it to the White House, showed it to the powers to be in town that dealt with the Corps. And at the end of all of that, he came back and told, at that time, a Captain Carlos P. Steele and myself, who both worked on the film, that uh, the heads of all the committees had told him that the film was instrumental in their desire to keep the Marine Corps. And as a result, uh, a law was written, which was uh, uh, written, I think, in 47, and then, and then was uh, finally sealed back in, in 51, that the Marine Corps would have three divisions and three air wings in perpetuity, and nobody could change that but Congress. And I think that shows the value of film and probably was the most important thing that came out of all that we did. Oh, excellent answer. You know, the mind, you just go back and you think of all the things that we've accomplished based on, in the Marine Corps, based on those photographs and that film that you made in the time frame 1940 through 
1850, that time okay. frame. It's, a, it's amazing. Uh, and Chip, I'm glad that you wrote this book for all of us. Uh, it's a great book. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say based on what we've just said here to our uh, viewing audience uh, on this book? Well, just uh, I just feel real honored to have uh, uh, had the book reviewed in Leatherneck uh, and uh, Marine Corps Gazette, and it, it brings back memories of my father, the late uh, Lieutenant General William K. Jones, writing his base plate McGurk articles, yes. a leadership series for yes. the Marine Corps Gazette, and so um, it all kind of is a big circle for me because I was about seven years old watching him write, and I never planned to ever write anything. But I, I think, you know, our, our parents sort of imbue us with certain things and uh, besides imbuing me with, uh, you know, admiration for the Marine Corps, even though I wasn't a Marine myself, he also helped, uh, helped me uh, learn how to, the importance of, of trying to get things right and, and also try to get them accurate because he dealt with a lot of journalists during Vietnam and didn't feel that, uh, that he always was getting the, that, or that the Marine Corps was getting the real story. So working with Norm was a, a daunting exercise because I knew that he would try to uh, keep me straight. On, it's his story, not mine, and it's, it's, the, and it's the Marine Corps uh, combat correspondents and Bill Janaus, who was never found, and all these other brave people uh, who, who's just the, the story, you know, the, I think the story has a timeless uh, uh, value. Mm -hmm. And I'm, yep. you know, I'm, just, I'm just honored to be the teller of this part of it. If I might say one more thing, and that is that they, we proved the value of film uh, through Bombs Over Tokyo, and uh, I don't think that, uh, that many people in the Corps today uh, believe in the intensity of film and the need for it as much as uh, we did then, and I would only suggest that they, they uh, review whatever capabilities they have today and see what they can do to improve them. Well said. Thank you. War Shots, War Shots. by Charles Chip Jones about Norm Hatch, his career, and the impact that film and photos have had on our nation and our Corps. Thanks very much. And this book is available uh, through the Marine Corps Association uh, bookstore uh, and, uh, and other stores. We wish you well with the book. Thank you for coming down today. You're welcome. Leatherneck, magazine of Marines.